Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum, and today, courtesy of Woody's Weapons and Sienna Armory, we have a chance to actually come out on the range and do some shooting with a live post-sample uh, registered FN P90. Very easy to shoot, accurate, minimal recoil because it is a teensy tiny little cartridge. This is 5.7 by 28 millimeter, which is I believe a 31 grain bullet traveling at about 2,350 feet per second. We're talking something anomalous or analogous to jacketed 22 Winchester Magnum, something around that sort of uh, range. So. Uh, the idea is you should be able to use it in bursts because one round's not going to do much anyway, but the low recoil should make it very controllable. The, uh, this is an idea that's been out there for a lot of PDWs, guns like uh, the Scorpion uh, in particular. The Well, there's a bunch of others. It is, in fact, quite easy to shoot. Uh, one of the things I was most curious about is how the trigger would feel, because this uses a progressive trigger where a short pull will fire one round and a long pull will fire more. Now this one does have a semi-auto restricted selector setting as well, but on full auto it is singles. There. And then full auto if you keep pulling the trigger farther back. The last time I shot one of these, I didn't like the trigger in it at all. This one's actually much nicer to me. Um, what I don't like about a progressive trigger in general is when you have a situation where it's shot, delay, and then the rest of your burst. I would much rather have it be one good trigger pull and gets me three rounds down range than trigger pull one round more trigger pull two more rounds. And it's not doing that to me this time. All right, a couple thoughts about the ergonomics here, because obviously, very unusual shaped package. Um, the front grip works. It takes a little getting used to, having your thumb and forefinger here playing around together, but it doesn't actually interfere, really. Um, the safety has nice little serrated bits so that you can operate it easily enough with either left or right hand, that's nice. The gun is fairly wide, and that's a result of the magazine, which has to be as wide as the cartridge is long. And it's kind of squarish back here, so you have a little bit of an awkward cheek weld where you have to bring your cheek way, uh, relatively far over the top of the gun to line up with the optic. Again, it works, but it's a little bit, a little bit awkward, a little bit different than a typical cheek weld. Um, certainly something you can get used to. It is a fun gun to shoot. I am, like, the the overall practicality side of me wonders just how effective, like, how good of an idea of a compromise is the the PDW cartridge idea, the 5.7 or the MP7's 4.6 millimeter cartridge, because you really do sacrifice quite a lot in terminal effectiveness to get the low recoil and the high velocity to get some armor penetration. Like, I can understand this in its original context uh, to defeat Russian body armor on paratroopers behind NATO lines in World War III, but does that hold up so well today? I'm not sure. It's curious to me. I think it's an interesting fact that most of these guns are used not by the sort of truck drivers and artillery crews who they were designed for, but rather by special operations and security personnel. All right, well, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. I always find it illuminating to get a new gun out to try at the range. So we'll just, I've only got about 15 rounds. We'll just dump all of those. Thanks for watching. That does hold on target nicely. It bounces around a little bit and then just kind of stays in its zone.